So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Klaus Fister. I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Mike Lesher and Dr. Michelle Ulay. Uh, today, I'm gonna I'm working on several different uh, chromium nickel copper PG deposit in the Superior Province, and today I'm gonna present a, a third of my project, which consists of uh, geochemical compilation of the primitive rocks uh, within the Superior Province. So my project has uh, some funding from the Geological Survey of Canada and for the TGI program. And we have a lot of uh, in-kind contribution from the o OGS, from the Quebec Geological Survey, and from the companies such as Nor Noron, Asimov, Kimpala, and Valley as well. So, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, so my project lies on the problem here on the Superior Province where we have some different metal endowments uh, like variation of metal endowments across different domains and terrains in the Superior Province. So in the Archean, uh, many of these uh, nickel copper PG and chromium PG deposits, they are preferentially hosted in chromatic rocks. Uh, and so like in, in the Abitibi, for example, in the Abitibi Wawa, we have like numerous nickel copper PGE deposits, as you see, there's lots of red stars here. And like in the rare chromite mineralization here in the, in the Shibanda area, in Shibanda and Grayson Belt, in the Wawa terrain, it's a province. Uh, whereas uh, here on the northern part of the Superior Province, in in this area that encompasses the Bird River, the Ushi, uh, Oxford School, and La Grande Instrument uh, domains, as we, we call it the Boji domain, super domain that encompasses all these sub provinces. We have uh, a world class chromite deposit uh, the, in the Windifier and some small, some minor deposits and prospects on um, Bird River. Uh, um, and Arike and like Fed and like this mountains, uh, and some significant uh, nickel copper PGE deposits as well as the Eagles Nest in the Wind of Fire and some minor one in nearby Bird River and like one is so we, having that different uh, metal endowment, uh, we we plan that we planned uh, uh we, we try to understand the, uh, what, are, what controls the different uh, metal endowments in the South Provinces, what are uh, the, the, the constraints that generate this, this lack of chromite deposits, for example, in the ABTB and this chrom, chromium rich deposits uh, in the so called boogie super domain. So, for that, we are building a database on the compositions of the chromatic rocks, which are the main host of these, these mineralizations. Uh, and also uh, compare all the geochemistry between these domains and to understand their petrogenesis. So our uh, relevance of this study is to, to understand, of course, the, the, the temper, the spatial variations of the, the of the original chromatic magma uh, in the superior provinces, and then and and classify all these chromatiites, and try to and understand what are their relation uh, and how they favor the the abundances and different endowments of the chromium and nickel copper PG mineralization in these terrains. So our database is still being built. built. So like the steps to build this database, first of all, I'm stretching several unique little geochemical data on several MAF and ultra -MAF rocks from many public and private sources. So by public sources, I, I can uh, mention OGS reports, CGON database, 
um, papers and theses, and also we have some access to some company data. So far, uh, I extract more than 20,000 uh, samples from like more than a thousand sources. And, but among the samples, there's a lot of, uh, I'd say undesired samples. So for this, we have to clean up all these, we have to plot and clean up the outliers and look at our anomalous values and treat this as bad data and eliminate it. And also many times one data is publishing in our database. So there's some duplicates generated. So we have to also uh, eliminate this to don't have any bias in our, in our database. Uh, after that, we, we scream and filter out all, all like uh, to, the, to the possible extent, of course, because I don't have a petrographic uh, access to all these samples and, uh, and using uh, filters such as uh, high CO2 values, uh, LOI against MGO, uncorrected values of MGO to, to eliminate some quartized samples, for example, and aluminum silica filters. And then after that, we, we might have some toleitic and vermeilic cumulates uh, within these rocks. We also try to eliminate the best we can. And also, like we have to uh, take care of the metadata and uh, classify the location confidence. So we have dealing with like, dealing with several uh, different sources from different years. So sometimes we don't have any access to location at all to understand and plot the data. So we, we have to put this on hold a bit uh, to try to before uh, incorporating this old data in, in the database, for example. So in summary, from this more than 20,000 samples, we end up with so far with 10,500 samples. The distribution of this data is uh, not like, it's, it's very, it's not very equal to be honest. Uh, well, mainly because like the ABT here, as, we, as I, mentioned here that comprises 58% like of the samples. This is much better studied and a lot of company work in like previous database that uh, that are like available to, to access for this area here. And second to that, now we have like a lot of data from, especially from the Ring of Fire, but also from several uh, deposits and prospects here too in the BWG super domain. The others are still need to fill some gaps as we see here, I, I pointed out some uh, empty uh, air, uh, market areas here that still comprise some, uh, some places to fill up with data. So when we plot all the data, well, we see that uh, in this case here, plotting titanium against uh, magnesium that we can under, uh, see more or less the, 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 the evolutional trend of these rocks. Uh, we see there's a complete continuum between the like chromatic and non chromatic rocks. So there's a like very, uh, a very large, uh, data spanning through all our, our database. So for reference, I, I plotted here uh, uh, a very, uh, a very uh, well studied and differentiated uh, chromatic, uh, chromatic uh, affinity, uh, chromatic flow, sorry, as the Fred's flow. And we see that we, we have some from olivine cumulates to uh, gabbroic rocks. So we have like the, uh, a very a, a large continuum that represents uh, the variations in the chromatic field. So moving on here to I have this plot here of chromium against magnesium, it's a very good proxy to understand 
how the, the climatic rocks behave in terms of chromium, uh, chromium saturation and chromium undersaturated magnets. So we see that uh, many samples that you see in the next slides will plot here in the olivine chromite accumulation air, uh, uh, accumulate chromatiite, and some will plot here in olivine without chromite in lasocumulates. Well, this is because some original mag or some parental magma will not form uh, uh, will not form a uh, Will not, we will be undersaturated in chromite and will only have uh, chromite when they, they reach the chromite saturation, more or less here at 25% MGO, whereas some, some low mass, lower magnesium chrom uh, chromite, uh, chromatiites will be saturated in chromite and will differentiate it towards uh, olivine chromite accumulation. And this is the case here, as you see in this slide, for the Buick super, super Domain, where we see all the these accumulation here from this density data plot from, of, of olivine chromite cumulates that are derived from low magnesium chromatiites. Whereas in the IBTB, for example, we see that there is a, a larger data set that is derived from high magnesium and, and rich satur uh, chromite saturation uh, around 25% MGO. So looking now at the classification of the chromatite and the chromatite basalts. Uh, so there's a, most of the, the chromatite, they are, uh, subdivided in terms of uh, aluminum, titanium, and and like and light rare earths so like gadolinium and terbium. So this classification generates like four different types of chromatiates: the aluminum undepleted, the aluminum depleted, the titanium rich, and the aluminum rich chromatiate. Um, aluminum depleted and titanium rich in uh, chromatiates in terms of aluminum and titanium, they have more or less the same signatures. So we are treating them together uh, so far. And apart from that, we have the siliceous high magnesium basalts, which are uh, final the differentiated rocks from chromatic uh, magmas and that went through some crystal contamination. So when we plot all our data in this, uh, at, with this chromatic, uh, this chromatic classification in mind, so we see there is a continuing variation with, uh, with the composition. So many, yes, many, uh, when, when, when plotting like, a large amount of data, we see that many fields would overlap each other. Uh, that that may le le leads us to think that most of these fields can be arbitrary, but their meaning is basically uh, relies on the composition and that of the source of these chromatic rocks and also the degree of partial melt and the uh, composition that of residues. So it turns, as you can see here, when plotting with gadolinium and terbium, uh, we see the aluminum rich chromatiites has uh, more garnet in source and which and also went through more uh, for larger degrees of partial melting, whereas uh, titanium rich for, uh, chromatiites, for example, here are more uh, re uh, res has more residual res res residual garnet. And also, as I said before, the silicious high magnesium basalt in the past is like uh, uh, is a product of direct cross contamination and from from the schematics, and that's why we see all this scatter going to this direction here. So, looking uh, how the data 
plots through different uh, domains in the superior province, we see that mostly, like pretty much, yeah, most of the, the these rocks in the superior province in, in India, even Abbey to be Bugi and Wawa, they are mostly uh, they mostly they most com mostly comprise of uh, aluminum on the pleated cumadiites. Uh, aluminum rich cumadiites doesn't make a good uh, number of that, and we see that like the number the, the, the distribution of titanium rich aluminum the pleated cumadiites are kind of the same with others. And so this means that uh, thinking about uh, uh, mantle plumes and a source uh, and, and mantle source with that most of the uh, Kumeyaks formed in the BTB, Boogie or Wawa, they are formed at shallow levels, like relatively shallow levels at, with uh, relative and with some kind of uh, or uh, with a, a substantial, so this substantial degree of fortune of fortune logic. And thinking about the these these uh, many cumulative rocks, so using the the Pierce plot of niobium and terbium against story with terbium. Uh, this can this can help us to to characterize uh, how crystal input happen with the in this in this rock. So, pierce plots uh, they normally use it for uh, basalt, but since uh, thorium and niobium they are incompatible in olivine, so it's okay that they work in cumulate rocks. So, what we see here is that we have a subduction uh, trend. That goes from the from more the morbid the, the the mantle array to, to a volcanic array. So this is a sub issue, uh, which is so parallel to the morbid array. We have uh, a trend that goes towards the uh, uh, assimilation of felsic material of of crystal material, and also. A trend, a parallel trend in the more field, more fields that indicates partial melting or fraction crystallization. So, looking at the the cumulates here, the superior problems, especially in this uh, domain here, we see that most of them they appear to be derived from depleted sources from normal sinoferric mantle, and went through uh, significant uh, contamination. Uh, towards uh, the the Archean, towards the Archean crust right here. So, but as we see here, there's a lot of scatter here in the Bulgi. Of course, this, the scatter might be also because this is very like these are trace elements that are in very low amounts in this in kinetic rocks. Uh, but well, even though. Like it's this data is here, like this it must must be related to 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 contamination and consequently the beauty super domain is is one of the best endowment in chromium and nickel copper PGE in, in the superior province and shows more uh, contamination than a BGBR wall, for example. So with that in mind, we can summarize everything to, to say that uh, most of the to be the climatic rocks, they are derived from the high magnesium and chromium undersaturated, as we see in the chromite magnesium plots. So that might be some proxy for the average not, not having uh, significant chromite mineralization. And meanwhile, we see that in Boogie and at some extent in the Wawa, the chromatic rocks, they are derived from chromite saturated and low, lower magnesium mag, uh, magmas. That can be consistent, that it is consistent to the 
the high abundance of chromite mineralization throughout this, this, this super domain. So as we saw, like there is a, a continued trend across the several classifications field, but uh, it is consistent with uh, some, of some, of some, some kind of variety of mantle, there are some different, different uh, mantle plumes depths or different sources. So, okay, it, it is expected to have so this many different uh, classes of Pumediates uh, all around the Superior Province. And also uh, the presence of the numerous presence of the Pumediate basalts and the silicious high in magnesium. This is like a, a, an evidence of uh, fracture crystallization and crystal assimilation in these areas. And also we can uh, see that there is like a high degree Crust, uh, have high degree levels of crucial contamination, especially because of the scattering in the silicious high magnesium results. So, uh, okay. So the next steps of this compilation work is actually continue compiling data and focusing on areas with a smaller number of samples, such as one of those empty areas that, that I mentioned, uh, and also like in the Western Wabigun, Marmion, uh, Opatica, some of these areas, uh, we still have to fill some gaps. And map, of course, map all the distribution of the schematic rocks and in several different uh, levels of, of uh, in several different levels, several different scales, I'd say, like this, with like different, not only domains and terrain, but at the same level and possible. And also separate and evaluate this data within the context of proximity to nickel copper PG and chromatization. So compare mineralized samples with bare samples uh, and, and try to create some clusters in all that classification fields with the help of uh, multivariate statistical analysis, uh, statistical tools to try to, to better constrain those uh, fields and, and, and the overlap that some of these classification generates among each other. After that, we, we, are, we are also working in the iron formation database and we, we will integrate this schematic geochemical database with the iron formation database to identify some sources uh, of sulfide and oxides for all the schematics associated and see their relations with the nickel copper PG and chromium deposits. And with all that in hand, we will develop models for the differences in endowments. Well, and also think in terms of magma flux and access to the crystal sulfur and oxides, mostly from these iron formations in uh, select areas in the, the, the superior province where mag chromatic magma were more prone to access crystal sulfur and oxides, and also understand some of the geometry of this, all the systems. And that's it for me. Thank you, if you have any questions. Great, thank you very much, Klaus. Is there any questions? Eric. Uh, yeah, um, thanks for that presentation and a very detailed analysis of the data. Um, I noticed in your uh, summary slide that you talked about doing uh, multivariate statistical analysis on the data, which I think is a, a, a really nice way forward. Um, I think the data set that you've collected and those that you are planning to compile uh, offer an ideal opportunity to carry out some very uh, elegant, sophisticated uh, 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 data analysis. And um, I'm thinking, looking at the data from a compositional point of view, you know, eliminating the problem of closure and then developing classification schemes, particularly with the benefit of using the, the ratios of some of the trace elements, I think would be really helpful. But combining it within a uh, something like a random forest or some other uh, statistical classification and prediction uh, technique would be useful. 
So I hope that's one of the ways you could go forward with this. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, some of the next uh, next steps is actually look at the trace elements and see uh, how they they are varying with uh, with the like in in relation to alumino and titanium and other like elements and like creating this this. Uh, a variance, and then we can like close all together and see how this can help mm -hmm. us. So, uh, yeah. okay. this field. So thank you. Thanks. All right, Bruno. Bruno, go ahead. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Klaus, one of the main Axis of research is metallurgy is going to be co comparing the BCB, which is metal rich, with the uh, with the Wabigun, which is less rich, less endowed in metal. Mm. I mean, you have a few uh, commercial example from the the Wabigun. Uh, you had Lumbee Bay, and you, you had Steep Rock. Did you were you able to find other example of the Ultramafic within Wabigoon, and did you find that they had the, because they're kind of unusual with being uh, one category you didn't have was that they're very rich in rare earth element. They're enriched in rare earth element, which is which is different from the other uh, cometic rock. Uh, did you find other other rocks that other cometic uh, rock from the uh, from the Wabigoon, and do they show the same trend? Uh, uh, Bruno, uh, I'm still just to look at the Wabigoon in more detail and actually compile more data. Uh, uh, I have the, uh, I have seen data on the Lumbee Lake and Shipper Rock, mm -hmm. and yeah, they they're you see that they are like more uh, enriched in this Gadley and Turden uh, yeah. elements. And they're actually, I'm trying to, I think there is a, an area, I think it's Lake of the Woods. I'm not sure if it's Wabigoon. One of the thing you, in your graph, you, you showed that, that this enrichment in light rare earth within those, those rock was due to uh, crustal contamination. And uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the papers on those rocks are actually proposing different models, so you might want to look at those because oh, yeah. they, they're not they're not that agreement with with cross out contamination for this enrichment in light rare earth. Mm -hmm. They they because their 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 argument is that you would have to assimilate so much cross out material that that would change the composition quite significantly significantly of the rock. Yeah, well, yeah, that would be interesting to look at this in more detail. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian, uh, one short question. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, mine kind of goes off, off of what Bruno was asking. And because one thing that stood out to me, you didn't mention when you were um, in your compiling and screening for Matiites. Uh, you didn't mention lampophores, um, which can be elevated in magnesium, elevated in chromium, have those similar AL uh, aluminum to titanium ratios. So those could end up in your um, database and uh, would have a much different source than, uh, than the Kmatiites. So I'm just wondering if you've been screening for those. Well, yeah, I have. Well, when I see that I, when I, when I put on my as I say, on my initial slides on how I'm proceeding with the compilation that I like eliminating, like for example, ultramafic totally. I, I'm not actually eliminating, I'm just uh, setting them aside. And that uh, encompasses uh, some lamp fires and, and also some uh, possible, but for example, areas that we don't, we don't have uh, some magnets available, but it's like, and we, so I simply treat them as a uh, basal accumulate. So I set them aside to look at them before. Maybe someone has some 
on his site on that that I don't have at the moment or maybe ran into some paper and of course I'm always looking at them and they are there and I'll look at them when when I'm going to more detail. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Oh, well, thanks very much. 